Hey, it's evening of July 4th, so if you hear some loud exploding sounds, you'll understand that it's uh, commemorating Independence Day. So this is uh, what I'm, I'm doing for one of the viewers who left a comment asking uh, for some basics. Um, this person is an interior designer, and they were asking for some structural um, information about the sizes of things and how they go together. So I thought I would start right here with uh, pre-cut stud lengths. You can go to Home Depot's website or actually go to Home Depot and you'll find they'll have they'll have stuff like 2x4, 8 feet, 2x4, 10 feet, whatever. But then you'll see these unique lengths, 92 and 5 eighths, 104 and 5 eighths. All you have to remember is an 8 foot wall uses pre-cut studs that are seven foot eight and five eighths and it goes up by one foot increments from there some people like to use inches 92 and five eighths 104 and five eighths 116 and five eighths i've always hated using inches because when i tell somebody hey go get me a 196 inch uh, board you have to look in your mind or do the math or pull out your tape and figure out that that's a little bit over 16 feet so I always like feet and inches. So I just remember seven, eight, and five eighths, or eight foot, eight and five eighths, because we only use like eight foot or nine foot here in Pacific Northwest, typically. People down south in Texas, they're gonna go with 10, 11, and 12 foot wall height, or ceiling height, or whatever you wanna call it. And the way you get that total wall height is, you're gonna take a bottom plate, inch and a half, and a top plate and a double plate, so that's, inch and a half times two or three inches. So really that's three inches plus inch and a half is four and a half. So all these pre-cut studs, you add four and a half inches to them and that becomes your finished framed wall height, actually. That's where the joist will sit. And then from there, whatever you're using for your ceiling, if you're using half inch sheetrock, you'll reduce that down to be your finished ceiling height. But um, I'm making this document right here. It's going to be a PDF, and when I'm all done, I'll do another video, but this is just a short, just to let you know where I'm headed so that you'll be able to use this as a reference guide. There's a YouTube link to a great YouTube video that um, I'll see if I can remember to put that in the description. And then this is the other thing. Here in Washington, they've decided they wanted continuous um, foam sheathing on the outside, and we always use 2 by 6 up here. And the new code is um, minimum R20 in the walls and minimum R5 in the continuous sheathing or the continuous insulation under sheathing for a total of R25. And we already have R21 bats, so I would just use that. And then um, Zip makes R6, which is 1 inch plus 7 sixteenths. So... Like the uh, like the comedian and ge uh, framing genius Tim Euler said, um, inch and seven sixteenths is close enough to be considered inch and a half. So we're not building cabinets here. Anyway, so this is uh, SketchUp doing a three D model. I saw he did a really good one too. It was uh, in conjunction with actually being on the job site with some video, which was good, but. Um, I wanted to capture what he said and he said like they like to overlap and so when you do that you need to pull your tape from over where the sheathing's going to be to the center of layouts so that you break it four feet on a stud you don't just hook the framing and go because once you stick your sheathing over you're going to be that thick wrong you know what i mean your, your whole this plywood here that you see my cursor right there it's going to stick past this thickness here which means you're going to miss your stud by that amount so things to think about and i i really like using uh, sketchup for the 3d details and then bringing it into chief architect for their um their layout system is amazing and all the numbering this is actually a plan view that i've exported when i double click this it takes me to the plan view, and it's actually a CAD detail 
it's one of these in the plan. So I'm, I'm kind of curious why it's um, flashing the monitor when I click like that sometimes. Anyway, it's also, um, I think it's three inch by 131 is the minimum nail, but around here it's easier to get three and a quarter inch by 131 because you're shooting through plus or minus half inch because um, seven sixteenths is lame. Half inch plus one inch of foam into wood. So you need a longer nail and you need that uh, shaft thickness right there. They could always go up. And the other thing he mentioned which I've done this before for a Lindel house out on the ocean. They spec'd a, like an eight foot long section of wall and they spec'd four by sixes. This is a three by six, which is two and a half by five and a half, but they spec'd four by sixes. So it, it was like we, every, every joint that we had, every panel joint had uh, like a post <laughs> in the wall. And that's just because you're going to be shooting nails. I think our nail pattern either was two inch on center or three inch on center on both sides here. So if you just had a regular two by six, you would end up uh, destroying the wood structure of the stud. And then none of this would have any strength. So that's why they do that. And if it's done correctly, uh, this plywood is immensely strong at the, see the direction my uh, cursor's moving. It's that rack dimension. It keeps it from racking along the, I guess, along the face of the sheathing. So there's that. So once I get done, I'm going to fill up this document with a bunch of good basics stuff. This frame related, like, I think I'm going to do headers and show how um, typically all the windows I've ever set have a half or I mean a quarter inch clearance all the way around. And so many window companies, they'll build their windows a half inch undersize in both directions so that you can do the framed opening to the exact called size, like 3050. And then their window will come half inch less in both directions. So you'll have a quarter inch space all the way around. But you always need to check because somebody's going to order something. And if you don't have that information before you build it, Murphy has a way of making you have to redo it. So I've seen that happen with Anderson wood windows, but fortunately the builder reached out and Anderson provided a, uh, like a cut sheet type thing for building rough openings. Nowadays, all that stuff's online. So just be smart, know your project before you land on the ground and start doing things. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's it. This short is not short anymore. <laughs> <laughs>